So now the next question is, is that how do you pay for it? How do you evaluate the storytelling that you're creating? What are the metrics that you use? How do you figure out a way to spend more money and put more resources behind it? What are the things that your team needs to do to do great storytelling for your brand? That's what we explore next. How do I connect with my consumers, deliver them value first, and then ask for the sale? And it goes back even further than that, it's that people-to-people -people business. With so much technology and automation and all these things happening, at the end of the day, you want to do business with people you like. I say this is like a joke, I say we, we have a very intimate relationship with our customers, that they sleep with us after all, right? <laughs> Which is true. And so uh, we are in a very unique and special position uh, to, to your point. We've got all, everything is sitting here as a media company essentially, right? Now we just got to assemble it and put it together um, to do it the right way to build that loyalty with consumers. Um, and always, you know, we're trying to put heads in beds as well. But for us, it's really focused, how do we, in the long term, build true value with the consumer so they start to love 19 of our brands through the portfolio, and it's not just content. Content's one piece that gets them into that ecosystem, and how do we keep them there? Uh, if, I, if I meet you and you say, hey, welcome to LA, you haven't been here before, whatever it is, there's a great restaurant down the street, go check it out, whatever it is, and great. I'm. Um, gonna like you a little bit more because you provided value to me first, right? You didn't try to sell me anything. You're just like, hey, let me tell you about some stuff. Same thing we're trying to do as a brand. And then I may come back to you and say, hey, I went to that restaurant and I found another place, right? And, and then you learn something. And through that, you, those two people are building a relationship, essentially, right? And providing value and they've created a value exchange. Um, and I think brands have that opportunity to do the exact same thing. And that's been our approach is how do we create value and start a conversation, and it takes a long time. Brand loyalty doesn't happen overnight. It's a long harvest of give and take. Creating a value exchange between consumers and brands is essential. Dick's Sporting Goods has found its voice through documentary storytelling, focusing on their philanthropic support in local sports. The brand donated $200,000 to keep four girls hockey teams on the ice in Anchorage, Alaska a state in which Dick's currently has zero retail stores. Frank Igrick talks about Sports Matter, a Dick's foundation that is helping athletes and teams all over the country, and the impact these stories had on consumers in other states. Nobody's expectation was, is that this is gonna be a traffic driver or people are gonna really kind of care outside business-wise. You know, our, our expectations was that hopefully people could see the value that these girls had and what sports brought to them, that it would help contribute to this overall conversation of how we can kind of change this curve. Um, and going through Twitter, I was, I was unbelievably surprised, is a lot of the conversation turned to, oh my God, I can't believe you guys did that. I'm going to do all my shopping with you guys. I'm a Dick's customer for life. So that language was what the consumer said. It wasn't what we were trying to do. Right. You know, and so as long as we are in that genuine space, people know it. Right. It's easy enough to assume that meaningful charities will boost a brand perception. But how do you know the content will have this kind of impact? How do you justify the dollar spent on something so ambitious? There is a barometer that we have internally that um, where we kind of measure what we define as good, and it has to be good. That's where it starts, because nothing else can happen past that. And then on the business end of it, we do an MMA study that basically takes in all the consideration, all the type of work that we do. And we've proven that the genuine storytelling we do has our biggest return on investment. So it's pretty simple. Pete M. Wally describes a campaign for Intuit's small business division. Rather than running ads that tell small business owners that Intuit is behind them, they run a nine-month program that allows these small businesses to each tell their story for a chance to win a Super Bowl appearance. Great stories, even greater value. We are using both traditional media and um, a lot of digital. Uh, what we do is we run a campaign where we work with Intuit Small Business Division to actually run a contest and find a small business that will win this contest. We will then create a commercial for them and run it on the Super Bowl at Intuit's expense. And it's one of those things where Intuit wants to tell people that they're behind small business and they're supporting small business and doing an ad that says we're behind small business isn't nearly as impactful as running a nine-month campaign that says 
make a video and tell us why your small business should win. And having other small businesses vote and get involved in that. And I'm not a huge believer in user-generated content. I don't like to put too much of a barrier to entry on a customer or a viewer. But with small businesses, they're so engaged and they're so passionate about trying to grow their businesses that they really do a great job. They make videos, they get involved, they merchandise the videos themselves. So this brand goes from being um, you know, barely known in a lot of these small business cases to being featured on the Super Bowl. And there's a lot of other medium prizes that people can win if they don't get to the Super Bowl. And in the end, all those small businesses walk away thinking Intuit has really been helpful to small businesses and it's much more impact than we could get by running a 30 second commercial ourselves that says Intuit's behind you small business. So uh, I think when we look at how do we monitor those things and how do we figure out if they're making money and if they're working, sentiment and the verbatims and the things you get are great. But we also generally start out with goals and one of the things we started out with uh, when we did this two years ago for uh, Intuit was a goal of saying, well, let's try and get four billion earned impressions. And we quickly, before the Super Bowl even happened, got to 13 billion uh, wow. earned impressions. Wow. And we're trying to figure out, is this a good investment or a bad investment? It's a pretty good investment if you're getting all that before you've even run the commercial on the game. And then there's a lot more that comes afterward. We know that these branded stories have to be highly effective and well executed to grab the viewer's attention and make an impact. We know that content needs to provide some kind of value, whether it be entertaining, informational, or thought-provoking. Even then, if you can create compelling, valuable content, how do you connect the dots to determine if your storytelling efforts are actually moving the needle for the business? Ultimately, we care about ROI. We care, right. did, did it push product off the shelves? Did it right. motivate people to do something differently? Um, and I think what, what we're really interested in is how, what role did that play within the broader mix of communications? Right. So not you know, one particular video, how many likes, how many shares you know, was the completion rate, but rather what impact did it have on every other element of the mix? Because we know a more connected plan drives higher ROI. When you hit it big and you see a big view count, it's the first thing you put on the table, but it's, you gotta kinda take it with, with a grain of salt. So I think it's, it's important to kind of look at the overall mix. I think completion rate is, is an interesting and, and underutilized uh, measure. So not just did you get a view which, which was qualified by that particular platform, but how much did people actually watch mm -hmm. all the way through. Um, you know, I think some measure of engagement is important as, as a proxy for if we think that that's going to drive something, but it's not the ultimate measure. I mean, I think, um, you know, if you, if you talk to a platform like Facebook, they'll say actually reach is your number one goal. You need to reach as many people as possible. Likes don't really matter. Comments don't really matter. Um, so it, it's not it's not easy, and there's not one simple solution. But I think we really believe in the power of the larger integrated mix. Uh, you can look at it and say, well, how many views did we get, and is that good? Is that successful? But I think one of the things that we have to challenge ourselves as an industry to do is to come up with ways to measure that we all speak the same language. Uh, one of the things that always made TV and print a good bet is that every client knew what CPM meant. Every client knew what GRPs were and TRPs. They knew how to buy things and how to equate value from that. And I think today we're looking at a different kind of economy where we have to really look at what is the impact of the dollars we spend. And at the end of the year, we have to look back and say, did we spend these dollars in a way that moved the needle for this business? I think one of the most important things about being a full service agency is looking at the whole toolbox and finding the right tools for every marketing objective. Not going into each assignment and saying, okay, what are we gonna do for social? What are we gonna do for TV? What are we gonna do for these things? What's our marketing objective? Who are we trying to reach? What do we want them to do now? What are the best tools for us to get there? And digital storytelling is becoming more and more a good tool in that toolbox. KPI, Key Performance Indicators. Not exactly a term associated with storytelling, but for brand marketers, well-defined KPIs must be identified and measured in everything they do. It's not just a matter of telling great stories, but creating KPIs up front and knowing the end game is absolutely essential in being a successful brand storyteller. A brand needs a voice. Knowing that voice is absolutely essential if you want it heard. For JW Marriott and David Beebe, it's a no-brainer. What space do you want to own, right, essentially? What, what world, what conversation do you want to essentially produce content for, curate content, and be a voice 
as part of that conversation and ultimately connects to consumers in that space, right? So for us, super easy, it's travel. Um, you look at a company like GE, which has done a fantastic job in content marketing too, I mean, a little bit more challenging, right? I mean, the portfolio company, they're making everything from jet engines to widgets. Like, so it's, how, you know, and so they decided innovation, education, those are spaces they want to be in and that's what they're about. Um, and even look at some CPG brands, they want to own, you know, with P&G perhaps, it's that mom space and all the areas and different things in there. So for us, um, super simple, uh, but also makes it a very big challenge because we can be literally everything if we want it to be. Meaning there's travel, which is the space, is we want to be the world's favorite travel company, but then there's all the reasons and passion points that people do travel for and things they do. <clears throat> From food and beverage, to art, to fashion, to music, right? And you've seen us program in those spaces. So going back to sort of that idea is every brand is studio. Um, short answer is no. And every brand shouldn't try to be. Right, you've got to decide what's your space, what are you going to play in, and really what's your end game, um, and, and what's the point of doing it. Insights, story, measurement, right? That would be kind of the those are the those are the mechanics of what we need to do and how we do it. Entertain, inform, inspire is the piece that gives you the license to do it and the way to think differently about doing it. So it's where you start thinking, what do we stand for? What can, how can, where can we meaningfully be part of a conversation? What audience would respond to that? And what audience do we want to respond to that? And what's meaningful to them in those areas? Right? Because if you think about it, those are the things that motivate us. Those are the things that are our triggers, right? any of us. So to me, this is the piece that informs us how, what stories we can tell and we should be telling, um, and what stories will resonate and create that value. And it is the thing that allows us to then set forth the KPIs, right? So what do we want this to be? What is the end result that we desire? Is it to make people have a different opinion? Is it to make them consider us? Is it to just start our first date, right? This is the place where we can set forth those KPIs, where we can understand what we want the content to do, that we can look at it in these buckets to say, is it a combination of these three things? Is it two of them? But is this what will mean something to the people that we're trying to connect with? And then how do we insert that and take that and make it part of this framework that we know, you know, that the, the insights will drive these pieces. The story will be mapped to this and created off the foundation of that. And then we will measure based on what's been created within that trifecta. As a brand, um, really important point, people say, oh, you're making films, I don't get it. Like, what does that do? Um, in our case, it engages that audience, inspires people to travel, it is driving revenue to our hotels, it's building that community, it's driving commerce as a media company. But think about it, to Bellman as a franchise is something that we can own. The idea of Bellman is something we can own. Um, and it all ties back to what our strategy is around everything, which is what we call a 3C strategy. There's, there's content, um, community, and commerce. So content's that first C, scaling content of all types across all channels. Community is the second one. How are we building community across all of those channels, whether it's subscribers on YouTube, likes on Facebook, you know, getting more merit reward members to sign up for the program using content. And then finally, once we have the built up that community, how are we driving commerce from that? Whether it is, you know, in our case, heads and beds, which we create sales packages around all of our films and people watch the film, they get presented a special package, they book, uh, you know, French Kiss drove $500,000 of revenue for that particular hotel in 60 days because people watched the film and wanted to stay there and experience the same thing that the actors did, essentially, the story, right? That's a big win. Yeah. And so we develop, that's one way we're driving commerce, but then there's the media side and there's all these other ways. So anyone can really take that sort of 3C structure and it's the same thing as a YouTuber, right? They, they develop content at scale, they built a community, and they're driving commerce from it. Um, it just it, it works a little bit differently for, you know, different people. Um, but that's that core model I think everyone needs to look at. You want to create quality content that's so good that it generates revenue. Absolutely. Not sales of the product. Right. It does that, but it generates revenue. So could you create content that may not sell one piece of product, but makes money? You know, it's a five-year journey. Mm -hmm. So I'm being tasked with monetizing a portion of our global media investment. So right. by the end of that kind of five-year milestone, 
um, a, a significant portion of media either pays itself back or turns a profit. So the way we're going to get there, I think, you know, we, we're going to start by really focusing on what kind of content makes money. Right. How do we make the right investments, test out a lot of different models and kind of understand what works. Right. I think as we do that, we're going to learn how to make better content and that's right. going to help fuel um, sort of our, our branded content along the way. So I think it's an interesting mix and it's an interesting journey where, you know, sometimes we might be creating content to make money that doesn't necessarily, you know, de deliver a brand message or right. you know these three objectives, but it might have something to do with the, the general territory that a brand is interested in. So if we develop a piece of IP, um, say a series uh, or a short film, um, and we own that IP, then our brands can integrate within that for free or for a discount, whatever that that ends up being. So you know it, it is an, an interesting kind of combination of branded content and content that makes money, but the ultimate goal is to do both. And also, you know. Uh, it becomes clear, you know, if, if there's no monetization, then, you know, or, it, you know, if, if it doesn't pass the initial filtering that this is not going to monetize, yeah. then you don't choose that, that, that content. Yeah. And, and that gives you clarity. Uh, it's, that's, a, that's a roadmap, right? Yeah. You know, I think what's interesting is um, some of the things that have held brands back have right. been the, the traditional paradigm of advertising. So I know I have X amount of, of, you know, marketing budget within the year. I know I have to achieve these goals, so I've got to split my budget against all of these things. And you end up, you know, in a world of fragmented media, you spread really thin. Right. Um, and so quality becomes an issue. But when you change the equation and you say, actually, this content has to make money, right. you can actually make bigger investments because you're going to start to pay it back. Mm -hmm. So we're exploring, you know, initiatives that they, they may cost more than the entire annual budget for, an, for any particular brand, but because they're actually generating revenue on the back of that investment, it means that we can afford to do things we never dreamt of doing before because well, budgets well, wouldn't allow it. When you go, when you start vi envisioning that your advertising and your investment is not, doesn't evaporate Absolutely. and doesn't go away and can, can never be used again and it has this annuity, it's a very, very interesting strategy.